Okay then, we have the first stage of the Arduino Sega Master System player set up. Huge thanks to Grumpy Mike from the Arduino forums for helping us out with this. As you can see, we have Alex the Kid on and he's just punching away at thin air. Not doing much just now, that will become a bit more advanced, a bit more creative as time goes on. But this is pretty cool so far. Let me show you the setup that makes it pretty cool. So, I have the, the master system set up to my TV as you normally would. Uh, there's my Sega master system. We're using the one in front, the master system 2. I was having some problems with the sound and I had to test it with the other one, but turns out it was just the tuning. Now you can see we've got a controller plugged in, but it's not any normal controller because this long, long wire leads into the Arduino. And we have set up here each of the wires, which normally goes to the different buttons on the controller, connected to different ports on the Arduino. Now I've put some resistors in line with them because I'm not convinced about the voltage that's coming in or the current. So I just wanted to be on the safe side with that. Uh, what we have is the up, down, left and right buttons on the left hand side in yellow and then the 1 and 2 button in blue. And right now I've got it set up to just keep turning the 1 button on and off. And that's why we see Alex the Kid just punching away into thin air. Alright, here's the code over here. And as you can see, there's not really much to it. Initially we set all the inputs, I mean, sorry, all the pins to be inputs. And then when we want to activate it, we set it to be an output with a digital write low. Now basically what this is doing is input means that the voltage is just floating about, it doesn't do anything. But when it's set to output, it becomes a ground and that's when the master system knows that the button's being pressed. So now in that loop function you can do a lot more advanced stuff I'm sure. What I'm going to do now is just go through and change this function to test all the buttons and make sure they work as I expect. Back in a second. Okay, so that's the code change to now cycle through all the different inputs and test them all. You can see that I've added a delay to the setup, just there, and that's just so that the system is time to start up, power on, go past the Sega logo and that, and then we drop into the main loop, where we go through each button, so first of all pin A, then pin B, then up, down, left, right, waiting for a second for each button press. So let's see how that is in the actual game. Shall hook up the Arduino. Start the console and reset the Arduino. Just so the timer is going from the right spot. There we go. So that's down, left, right, A1, 2, up, down, left, and right. And you can see it's working really nicely. Now, at this point, up doesn't do anything in this game, so that's why there's a bit more of a delay there than usual. But you can see the simulator is working really well. Unfortunately, it's not too smart just now, and Alex doesn't know how to avoid anything. All he knows is this simple each knee san she routine. Up, down, left, right, one, two. But yeah, if you have a bit of creativity about you, you can maybe find something exciting to do with this. Something interesting. Have it complete the whole level, have it complete the whole game by programming in the moves it needs to do. 
And if you are particularly um, inventive, then you might think about doing this to more advanced systems and the master system. I can imagine this being on the Xbox. Might be a bit harder, of course, depends on the game. But, yeah. There we have it.